evening, Soundside Church. Pastor Aaron coming to you and to your community group in particular one last time. That's right. Tonight is the final session in our time in Galatians, the Letter of Liberty. And I hope that this has been challenging to you. Hopefully it has been helpful. But I'd like to ask you to do one thing. Would you take a moment and consider what you want to do next? That is, when we resume our community groups in the fall, what would you like for us to study or discuss? It could be a book that we read together. It could be a book of the Bible that we study together. It could be a topic or a series of questions that we discuss together. I would be interested to hear that. So if you have something on your mind or your heart that you think would be helpful for our community groups or at least one community group, then uh, let your community group leader know know and uh, they will pass that on to me or just pass it on to me yourself. I, it doesn't really matter. But we would be, we really want to make sure that we are helping uh, and answering questions that people have, not to mention just simply opening God's word and letting God speak to us as we speak to one another, which is kind of the point of these groups that we learn to follow Jesus Christ more closely together, helping one another to do that. Speaking of helping one another, that is basically what we begin talking about as we jump into Galatians chapter 6 tonight. Now, you're going to read the whole chapter in your community group. It's not very long at all, but it is the most practical part of the letter to Galatians. That is a very typical uh, feature of Paul's letters in the Bible. He begins always by telling us what is true, and then he finishes by telling us what to do. Behavior always follows belief, and for Christians, our lives always flow out of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What theologians would say is that the indicative always precedes the imperative. Well, tonight we are finally in the imperative. That is, here's what we do with all this stuff that we've been looking at. Here are the practical consequences. Now, you're going to begin, uh, or rather let me begin, by explaining that as far as the letter of liberty is concerned, tonight what we're talking about is the freedom from failure. The freedom from failure. What I mean is, if you knew that what you planted was going to give you a harvest, it would really affect what you chose to plant, wouldn't it? And that's what these verses are going to show us, that God has guaranteed us a harvest for the things that we plant. Spiritually and figuratively speaking, of course, some of us aren't very good with tomato plants or chili peppers or strawberries. Others are better. But when it comes to our lives, what we plant will bear harvest. And that means we need to think very hard about what and how we are planting because we are free from failure. Now, let me once again help you understand what we're talking about as your guide. In the first few verses that you read, the first five verses, you're going to run across a very puzzling uh, couple of sentences. Specifically, verse 2 and verse 5 appear as if they contradict each other. Verse 2 tells us we should be bearing each other's burdens, and verse 5 tells us that everybody has to carry their own burden. What does that mean? Well, what that is referring to is the fact that in love, we help others shoulder the burdens that they are carrying without judging them. You see, when somebody is weak and we are called to help them, there are quite a few times that we judge judge that other person for being too weak to carry that burden, as if we could carry it if we were in their shoes. And what these verses are telling us is, you have enough to worry about dealing with your own responsibilities. You really have no idea what they're going through. So you might as well help. Every person is responsible for carrying what God has assigned to them, which means you are responsible for what God has assigned to you, not to judge how well somebody else is carrying their burden. And if they need help, then guess what? That's part of the responsibility God has assigned to you. That's my paraphrase of these verses. You read them and see what you think. When you get into the next set of verses, uh, verses 6 through 10, you're going to find this idea of planting and harvesting. 
You can either plant to the flesh or you can plant to the spirit. Either way, you're going to get a harvest. You may get the harvest of destruction or you may get the harvest of eternal life. I want to make sure we understand what we're talking about. This is not the two wolves theory of last week. If I feed my flesh, I'll get more fleshly stuff. If I feed my spirit, I'll get more spirit stuff. That isn't what that's talking about. What this is talking about is if I am living out of the flesh, I will do certain things that will produce certain consequences. If I'm living in the spirit, I will do certain things that will produce certain consequences. So we already learned the spirit bears fruit in our lives, and we will experience the results of that fruit, and those are good results. Now, I realize that is kind of rushing through it. You're going to read those verses. I'm using Romans chapter 6 as kind of a backdrop to that to help me understand what we're talking about. But if we live in the Spirit, our lives will produce holiness, and holiness will result in eternal life. That is what the Scriptures say. Now, that's verses 6 through 10. When you get to verses 11 through 18, you're going to find the apostle kind of wrapping his letter up, and he returns to his original theme of the gospel that produces freedom. And that's what we've been talking about this whole time. Freedom from all sorts of different kinds of slavery that we might be brought into. And that really is the message that we want to leave you with. And that is that the gospel gives us freedom. Whether it's freedom from this present evil age, whether it's freedom from social pressures, freedom from the law, freedom from discrimination, freedom from the burden of self-belonging freedom from the flesh, or freedom from failure. The gospel frees us to love and to live by faith. And that's where I'll leave you. And that's where hopefully you'll end up as you finish off Galatians chapter 6 tonight. Well, as I said, I hope this has been a blessing, a challenge, an encouragement. If you have any questions, please let me know. And I would be very interested to hear from you as to what you think would be a helpful subject or book or whatnot as we move forward. And with that, I will turn things over to your community group leader now. Now.